All right, we're going to be watching Reinhard, who is playing Tank, and this is on Gibraltar, Platinum, no, no, down to Gold 4. Help me climb back into Plat Tank. Mid-season 4, I reached Plat 3 on Tank. Since then, it's been huge loss streaks, though, so I'm looking for some external feedback as I'm down to Gold 4 or 5. Currently, this season, I've won 6 Tank games and lost about 24, I believe. That's rough. Some of a stack and some without. Almost every loss this season has been my teammates flaming me, saying I'm a bad tank and need to learn how to play the game, but I don't feel like I struggled with it when I worked on my way up to plat. I only play 3 or 4 tank games a session now, and don't play it after 3 losses at most. Really comfortable with Brawl tanks, but confident on Winston, Zarya, and Sig also. I figured I'd need to include 2 codes of losses from last night and today. One where I felt I played quite strongly, and my only misplays led to me dying. And one where I felt quite useless as a tank and rather unsure what the correct overall play, let alone individual plays per team fight went. Um, so we're going to be reviewing the first game. This is the one I felt I played generally quite well on a SIG. I had a big misplay and accidentally misclicked my shield during Diva Bomb in the first round. Not sure what else I really missed off the top of my head, aside from maybe some target priority choices in the second round. Okay, so that's the game we're going to be taking a look at. So I've already pre-watched this, uh, most of this at least. First thing that I noted is that you play like five, six different tanks. You play Sigma, Diva, Zarya, Ramatra, Winston, and Reinhardt, I believe. All right, so that's what, five tanks right there? Maybe I even missed one. But that's extremely unusual. <laughs> um, I do not think that you should expect to play most games and play five tanks. I think you should expect to play ideally one, maybe two, at most three tanks per game. It is extraordinarily rare that you would be playing even three tanks in a certain game, right? Because ult charge at a minimum is something that's 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 really, really impactful. So you want to pick, um, I would say not only ult charge, but also having your team play around, right? For example, if you open the game as Reinhardt, your team's like, okay, uh, you're you're gonna play a brawl tank, brawl lineup. So they all pick brawl, you know, heroes, right? You know, let's say they play pick like let's say uh, Reaper and Torbjorn. But then if you switch to Winston, all of a sudden your team's like, what what are how what are, how are we supposed to synergize with you, right? Because then you're totally out of sync just because you switched your tank. And it doesn't mean don't switch at all, right? Especially if you feel like you're being countered, not getting much value. But I would encourage you to think about a how do you pick a tank that's generally good for this map, period, right? So it's less likely that you have to swap. And number two is picking a tank that you feel very comfortable with because it is extremely unlikely especially in you know plat 3 down to gold 4 or whatever gold 5 it's extremely unlikely that you can play all these tanks at the same level this is so unlikely right i mean the chances are zero i would just i would bet like a million dollars that there's no way you can play these tanks all at the same level you just want the time or experience in the game so i would encourage you if you care about climbing Right? Focus on a core set of like two, three tanks and just play those, right? And just figure out, okay, this thing's not working, play that one. That one thing's not working, pick the third one. That one's not working, just play it out, you know? Like don't try to keep forcing all these different tanks into all these different situations because it's going to make it really, really hard to learn the game. It's, I, I make the analogy sometimes where I'm like, you, it's like learning five musical instruments at the same time, right? It's really, really hard to get better at any of them if you're trying to play them all at the same time. Eventually, when you get really good at one, will it make it easier to learn the other ones? Absolutely, right? But trying to learn them all at the same time is not a good way to learn the game. I think it's really, really important to highlight. Okay, next thing is, you said you feel like you generally played quite well uh, other than one specific misplay. Having seen this game, <laughs> I can say that I don't feel like you have a strong understanding of how to play quite frankly, any of the heroes that you are playing in this game. We're only going to go over a couple for the interest of time, but I, I think this is very important to note from the beginning, that there's a very significant disconnect between how you see your play and how I see your play. And I think that's probably what's causing you to lose a lot of games, right? You've won 6 out of 30 games this season, which is, you know, what, like a 20, 20 low 20%, low like let's say 23% win chance or something like that? It's low, right? So you're obviously doing a lot of things wrong. I have no idea what changed between now and when you got up to plat three but you know it is what it is all right let's get to the actual gameplay so you come out the door you play sigma i don't think sigma's a great choice for gibraltar i think uh, he's certainly not a good choice for gibraltar first gibraltar is well known as being one of the most uh vertical heavy maps in the game so it's really really important to play heroes that can take high ground away from the enemy if you can't play play heroes that take high ground, you will have a bad time. Sigma is notorious for being really bad at taking high ground because he has no ability to get up there, right? Other than just walking. Uh, and he has something that increases his speed. So often people play heroes like Winston or D.Va or Ball or uh, uh, Doomfist, right? Those are like really commonly played on this map. 
um, especially first and second, where high ground is so important compared to Sigma, Reinhardt, Zarya, etc. Right? It's just not necessarily a strong map. Does it mean you can't make it work? No, absolutely you can make it work. I'm just noting that generally speaking in the community and the meta understanding of how the maps work, low ground heroes are not picked very often in Gibraltar. All right, Jeeva's gonna come ahead. You throw a shield out. I, I don't really know what the shield is doing, right? Because I mean, like maybe you're like shielding off healing for the for the diva, but at this point, like the diva's gonna get forced back no matter what from 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 the fact that you're just in front of your spawn. But a minor thing, but I would just note that I don't know that you were consciously thinking that when you threw the shield out. But the good news is you did throw it behind the diva versus in front of the diva, so I think maybe maybe you were thinking about blocking healing. But regardless, I probably would have thrown rock right now. As soon as you started matrixing, I would have thrown rock. Right? Because I think you even see your boost in. Yeah, you see your boost in, so she doesn't have boost for four seconds. It is impossible for her to dodge this rock. So just chuck rock right now, right? Get get the damage in. Right? Now you throw rock. Now after you land rock, you should immediately hold down uh left mouse button. I assume this is on PC. Um you should immediately hold down left mouse button, right? To attack right away. Right? Because you can instantly attack after rock goes out and get another 110 damage in. But instead, you see you pause there and then you get the two attacks out late. So this is bad because you're just not getting damage in as soon as you possibly can. It's just a good habit. When you throw rock, immediately hold down the attack to fire right after. You use grasp here, and this is extremely common at lower ranks for Sigma. Sigmas use grasp at lower ranks almost always incorrectly. They always use grasp or like, hey, people are shooting, let me hold grasp. This is not the way grasp is used. Grasp is a super long cooldown. You do not just randomly use grasp and absorb some shield and be like, this helps me. It doesn't help you. You use grasp once you get low, right? Once you get, let's say, 50% health, 40% health, and they're all like, oh, kill a sigma, kill a sigma, that's when you use grasp. And you suddenly have a huge reversal in fortune from going from super low to super high because right? you get all the shield back. If you're relatively healthy and use grasp, nobody shoots at you, and then you gain nothing. Or if they do shoot at you, then you gain some health and you're still healthy. But it doesn't necessarily help you do your job, right? You're like that's not not that's not gonna change the outcome of the fight typically when you go from healthy to healthier, versus if you go from unhealthy to healthy, right? That's a much bigger difference in terms of the game flow. So this is gonna be a completely wasted grass right here. Again, you get like 150 health here, but like, does this help you win the fight? It it doesn't really, right? And you didn't need that. You could have just kept attacking here instead of trying to grasp at that moment in time. So you should be attacking the D.Va right now because you just need to force the D.Va off this corner, right? Just keep attacking her, eventually the D.Va will get forced off, right? You plus your team, eventually the D.Va's gonna get forced off in this corner. All right, you get trapped right here, and then notice, hey, you get trapped, you shield to try to keep yourself alive, but obviously you're purple. This would be a great time to use grasp to keep yourself alive. Also, you know, when you put the shield, you put the shield down instead of straight, which means that they're able to just attack over, right? If you just shielded up like this, for example, you could have covered yourself from all the damage from high ground. Regardless, this is a great time for Grasp, right? Grasp 100% saves your life here, right? Nobody in the enemy team can injure you right now if you have Grasp, because Moore is the only one who goes through Grasp, but your shield would block it. So Diva, Junkrat, Anna, all can't injure you. Ash, none of them can injure you if you have Grasp right now. So use Grasp and you live. All right, you died. Why did you die? Because you didn't have Grasp for another nine seconds, okay? This is what I'm talking about when I said earlier, where I'm like, I don't think you have a strong understanding of how to play your hero, because this is a completely incorrect usage of grasp, right? You use grasp, which means when you got stuck, which is the thing that happens, right? You're gonna make mistakes, you're gonna get out of position, the enemy's gonna bump you out of position, whatever ends up happening, it's fine. Grasp is there to save your life. And when you made a mistake here, which like, yeah, you walk in this is, is trap, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, it's not that big a deal, right? Use grasp, right? I use grasp here, I'm like, cool, eat, I eat 500 health, great, and now I'm like a 700 health sigma, and I walk over the enemy team and I win the fight. But you, wasting grasp means that you have no ability to do anything, and now you die. This is very unfortunate, right? This is gonna this is gonna cost you effectively 40 seconds off the clock on a four minute push. It's a big deal. All right, you're gonna switch to Zarya now, and you play Zarya for most of the rest of the uh, most of the rest of the attack phase. So when you come out here, I would for, again note every single bubble charge has 40 energy. Uh, as maximum that you can possibly get, I would be aiming to get 40 energy, right? So after two bubbles, I would expect you to have something close to 80 energy, minus some for decay, so 75 to 70 is what, I'm, what I'd be looking for. So you're gonna do your first bubble, you see your Mercy's low. I understand bubbling right now, so the, the weird thing is that D.Va actually has no way of killing the, the Mercy now because of the damage fall off. It's impossible, mathematically impossible, even with aimbot, that the D.Va could kill the, the Mercy right now. The Anna could have killed her, so I understand bubbling. Unfortunately, you're not gonna get any energy charge out of this, right? You get one charge, that's really bad. Now you're gonna be up here. You bubble your junk rat, who was like somewhat injured, but not that low. This I think is objectively a bad bubble, and you should have saved that. And now you're at zero charge after after using two bubbles. This is disastrous. 
<laughs> I can tell you that if this happened to me, I would literally think that I'm going to lose the game. <laughs> I know it seems like, oh, wow, like you think you're going to lose the game after making that? I'm like, if you read some of my other posts, I talk about how many mistakes can I make in a game and still expect to win, right? If I make zero mistakes, I expect to win the game like 75% plus of the time, right? I make one mistake, about 65%. About two mistakes, I, it drops down to about 55%. If I make more than two mistakes, it I just keep, you know, it, win rate keeps dropping and dropping, dropping. I would consider this a very big mistake. This would be one of those mistakes that I'm like, wow, this is really bad. You can't be using two bubble charges and get nothing out of it, like zero energy. It is it's not acceptable. Like, that is not the way that you can possibly play Zarya. Again, first bubble, I understand. Honestly, though, even if your Mercy dies, it's not that big a deal. Your spawn is so close. But the second bubble charge, this is really bad, right? That bubble charge is not, bubble is not going to get you any energy. Without energy, you are useless. Okay, you're pretty useless without your energy. Very, very problematic. All right, we can start burning, burning the diva right now. Um, again, without energy, you're basically not a threat. You use bubble at this moment in time, mostly to cleanse dynamite. But again, not a lot of people are actually shooting at you. So this, is, I think, is unlucky. I kind of would expect to take more damage here. But after three bubble chargers, we're still at zero energy. This is, again, super disastrous. The enemy team can just effectively ignore you. Like, basically, your team is fighting like four and five. And you're going to move cart here. So as a general rule, this will this push will never work. Um, you basically always have to go high ground either left or through here to clear high ground first, and then push, and then go down, and then take the take the final point. Um, I don't have a Gibraltar guide yet, but there's I'm sure there are other map guides out there for for tanks. But as a general rule for Gibraltar, you have to take high ground. So you're coming out here. Uh, Diva's going to pop missiles. This would have been a great time to use bubble because you could have gotten charge off for that. But instead, you use bubble after. Diva has stopped using missiles. Uh, actually, no, you haven't used it yet. Just aim for the for the Diva for the the Ando gets managed to get up high ground. Attack, attack. I think it's good that you're holding bubble this far, right? Like you're like, hey, look, no one's actually shooting at me, so you don't bother doing that until now. I think yeah, this is fine. Great. So you got 40 energy. Good, right? Now you're good. Unfortunately, you're low, right? You've already lost half of your health, and you have no more bubbles. So you have to play safe. You have to play safe. I would not qualify this as playing safe, right? So you're at half health right now. I would play. I would back up right now and play further to make sure I don't die. 250 health, I can die almost instantly. Okay. Now you take more damage. Again, you gotta back up here. You get super low purple to save yourself. Yep, burn the diva. It's fine. Here, diva's gonna pop. So quick tip for diva is as she's exploding out of her mech, you can right click the mech, right? And splash her, taking out half her health as she comes out, which makes it a lot easier to kill baby diva form. So what's gonna happen from here is you're gonna have 40 energy, all right? And you're gonna fail to kill anyone here. And this pretty much comes down to just straight up mechanics, okay? So for example, right now, what I would do, I would right click to the left of the D.Va to pop her up in the air, then I would zap her, then I would right click her dead and she's dead. I would kill her in about three seconds right now. Let's see what happens to you. Okay, you're slept. There you start zapping the ash, you're not right clicking at all. Oh, you're right clicking, you missed everybody. There's three people all clustered. A right click here kills the, the Junkrat instantly, nearly kills the D.Va and will drop the ash to half. Again, still not right-clicking. Oh, you do one right-click, good. You could another right-click finish her. Oh, just missed it. She got a little bit of healing. You shoot the trap, but like, honestly, the trap's not a big deal. Junkrat walks in your face and dies. That's great. All right. And we're going. Still zapping. I think your tracking is, quite frankly, poor. I'd say even, even for gold, I would say this is not good tracking. You should have right-clicked already. Still zapping here. All right. I would always right-click to finish the rest of your ammo and Zarya. It's tough because there's like so many things that are going wrong here from a mechanics perspective. Um, yeah, so right there, I would have also grabbed the two two of these right here. If you just grab them right in the center, this kills both of them. Diva's nanoed. Uh, you face tank her, which is not a good idea. I would have backed up from that. Again, Diva, Nano Diva does a lot of damage, right? She does 140 damage without missiles with, with Nano, not including headshot. So with Nano, she's doing 210 damage a second. So without bubble, she will kill you in two seconds. <laughs> without, without without bubble, and assuming she has no missiles and no headshots, she will kill you in two seconds. Like, I cannot emphasize, she will kill you so fast. You cannot walk into her. Like, you see how you walk forwards? You can't do that against Nano Diva. Like, you will die. You're extremely lucky to not be dead right now. You're gonna bubble your Baptiste to try to keep him alive. Again, bubbles go off, or missiles go off. You get super low again. Your team's doing an excellent job keeping you alive. So right now would have been your chance to Matrix because the D.Va just finished her matri or her grab because she just finished her Matrix. But honestly, you don't need to do it anyway because you capped. And since you capped, this fight doesn't matter, right? You're gonna win this fight sooner or later, no matter what. You just, you grab straight at her even though she's looking right at you, right? 
you wait way too long and then she's able to, to matrix it and you lose grab. That is also disastrous. I would consider that yet another like really, really, really bad mistake. And then you're gonna die here. Again, none of the spike matters because you already capped, so you're gonna get forward spun anyway and you're gonna push them off. But let's pause right there, okay? Let's pause and let's rewind this back because I think this is very important. So Zarya is very much a damage carrying hero. Okay, you don't have the utility that other people have. You don't have the displacement. Like you can't knock people around. You can't hook them out of position. You can't shield for your team, right? You can't uh, eat damage for them. You can't stun anybody. Zarya has none of that utility. Okay, you can just bubble them if you need to. And honestly, most of the time you don't bubble at your teammates anyway, or you shouldn't be. All you got is the fact that you do 170 damage per second <laughs> once you have a fully charged beam. That is what you do, right? If you're gonna play Zarya, you better be melting people all the time. The same way Zenyatta, right? If you play Zenyatta, you're like, oh, I'm doing a good job keeping my hand, my Discord up and my and my Harmony up. And you're like, that's enough to win the game. It's not enough to win the game. As Zenyatta, you better be carrying with your damage, your individual attacks. Zarya is like the Zenyatta of tanks, okay? Forget about the space creation and the utility and the defense and whatever, and just be like, can I kill people? If not, you are throwing as Zarya. And everything I can see here tells me that you don't have that mechanical skill right now. And that's the biggest reason why you are you're going to be losing games if you're going to be playing Zarya, right? If I watch this right now, like, okay, tracking, okay, great. Diva's going to die. Again, I would have right-clicked right now, right? But if you want to reload, that's fine. Again, right-click right there to pop her out of position. That would be really important. If you get slept, you should have turned back and be like, okay, wait, there's still an Ana behind me. It helped kill that Ana, right? Right-clicking would have helped her. But regardless, fine. You should have right-clicked right behind the Ash. So as the Ash is just retreating right now, you just right-click here, which bounces her forwards, right? Away from her team, and then you kill her. Again, the tracking here is, is, to be brutally honest, bad, right? Like, the Ash is walking backwards in a straight line. So I would expect 90% accuracy on this Ash. She's literally just walking backwards on a straight line right now. So you see, we miss, 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 barely touch her, miss, 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 barely touch her, miss, miss. You hit 10% of that, maybe, 15%, that's not good enough on Zarya. Right? If you're like, look, I want to play Zarya and I want to climb to Platinum, Diamond, and beyond, this is grossly unacceptable accuracy. Like, you, just can't, you just can't do this, right? And there's no other way for me to describe it. Like, because Zarya is such an aim-intensive hero, right? A tracking-intensive hero, if you cannot aim her beam, you cannot play Zarya at a higher level, right? You can play her for fun at the level that you're at, but I'm telling you, this is going to hold you back, right? There's no way that I can say this any other way. If you cannot do basic tracking like for example a hero who is walking backwards in a straight line you're gonna have a bad time right and i don't coach aim i think it's a very difficult thing to coach aim and a very time intensive process but at a minimum i would say try playing like fa matches right fa deathmatch and play that and play zarya repeatedly until you can get to the point that you can like win or come top three consistently in those in those lobbies and I think that would be very helpful at giving you the experience at fighting as Zarya and understanding things like right-click kills and, and, and other things. In fact, this gives me an idea that maybe I should actually play Zarya in uh, Deathmatch as a, as a video idea. Anyway, um, right over here, all, if I were you, all three of these heroes would be dead. Like me, single-handedly, no help from my team, no healing, no damage. I would just walk up here and I would have killed them already. How? Right? Again, so let this do it from the reload, okay? From this moment in time, I bubble. I simply bubble, walk forward, right click, jump grant dies instantly. Zap, zap the ash, right click, pop ash in the air. Zap, 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 right click again, ash is dead. Walk forward, zap, right click the baby diva, zap her again if I need to and she's dead, right? I would probably have to reload after killing the first two and then I will kill a baby diva after that. Again, what is the difference between you and me besides aim, right? You're not taking this aggressively. Despite the fact that you have nearly full health and bubble, you're playing far away from them. You see how you're playing far back right now instead of walking forwards? If you just walk forwards right now, the aim is really easy, right? Just walk forwards right now and you'll kill, kill everyone, right? You see how you play really far away, right? You're still like very tentative and nervous. You have two bubble charges right now and full health. Like you need to be pushing this fight, like applying pressure, etc. Like this is a really bad, I wouldn't even bother shooting that trap because like, who cares? This Junkrat literally suicides to you. Um, very, very, very lucky. You really don't deserve that kill at all. Right? Go back to zapping this diva, And then, you know, off you go. Right? So, I, I think, again, your mechanics here on Zarya are just very, very uh, subpar compared to, I think, the level where you need to be at to play in Platinum, to even get back to Plat. If I had to guess, I would say that you did not get to Platinum playing Zarya. 
right? Sigma maybe, but like Zarya, I would say probably not. Anyway, the Zarya play is going to be more or less the same. Um, I don't know that I want to talk too much about Ramatra, but you did say, hey, Sigma at the end, like you felt that you, like you played Sigma pretty well overall, so let's, let's watch your Sigma gameplay at the end. All right, so you're, you're in defense now, just attacking. This is a perfectly good spot to play. I think I'm fine with this. All right, attack to the Junkrat. He pops you, no problem. Right, another grasp that does not matter. You're basically full health. No one should need use to jump react. You did not need to do this, right? You should have just been attacking instead. So also note that your Reaper is going to be in trouble right here. As soon as you see that, throw shield down. Throw shield down to help save him. Uh, it actually would not have saved him, but that's what I would have done instinctively. Should be aiming for the jump right right now. Forget the trap. This is not a trap you need to kill. The, the, <laughs> you see, you're like very upset. You're like, oh, look, there's a trap. I better kill it in case my teammate walks. The teammate literally couldn't walk in front of this. The card's about to, to drive over the trap anyway. You do not need to waste your time killing this trap. You need to kill the back line, right? Either the Sigma or the Ash or the Moira, right? Anybody else right now, or even applying damage to the Orisa rather than spending your time, wasting your time attacking a trap. Dropping is a fatal mistake. There's no reason to drop right now. Right? As soon as you drop, you can't be healed or seen by your backline. Right? So you see how your, your Baptiste is playing up here, your Ash is playing up here. Right? They can help you if you play high ground. If you drop low ground, it's just you and the Junkrat. The Junkrat's not going to help you at all. Right? You're stopping the card here. Again, this is not a good place to fight. This is very attacker favored right now. Right? Arisa just walks into you. You use your grasp. Now that you know grasp, you need to play super safe because you have no way of getting out or no surviving yourself. Instead, you walk forward again, probably to try to stop the cart. You get extremely low right now. You get even lower, and then you die. So, again, let's let's instead of looking at it from your POV, let, let's watch it from here. Okay, watch from their perspective. Okay, we're pushing the cart. Oh, Sigma dropped. Okay, cool. Let's just shoot him because you can't get healed. As soon as I see you drop, I look. I'm like, wait, your healers are on high ground, right? Like how? Yeah, not your Ash, your uh, Anna, right? Your your Anna and Baptiste are both high ground. They can't heal you. As soon as I see you drop, if I'm the opposing team, I'm like, great, I free kill, right? I just you know, Risa, she walks through, walks through the shield, right? So it's applying pressure to you, right? Anna's finally, Anna Baptiste are forced to come down to try to save you, right? The problem is you're super engaged to five people at close range. The Risa continues applying pressure to you, right? Spins up, right? Knocks you out of position, push you, right? Breaks the shield, attack, 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 and then you die. This could all have been prevented if you just stayed high ground. If you stayed high ground, the Orisa is going to move the cart forwards, and then you kill the back line. And after you kill the back line, then you can drop and kill the Orisa because she has no help. So that's a really important thing, that game awareness, that positional awareness of, like, where do I need to be as Sigma? Like, where, where is success for me as Sigma? Since success for you as Sigma is not dropping to five people. Success for you is standing high ground and continuing to attack and force back the back line, and then rotating over and dropping if you absolutely need to. But dropping on her side of this uh, ditch is not a good idea. Right? This is not a good place to fight as a defending team. Almost always attacking team wins fights there. Okay. Uh, do you play any more Sigma? I really don't want to cover your other heroes just because it's going to be super time consuming. Yeah, you're going to play Winston and Reinhardt at the end. But okay. I'm going to stop there. Hopefully, this is helpful at the minimum for your Sigma and Zarya play to kind of like think through like the things that I talked about. Again, I would emphasize, you know, the ability usage, right? Getting value from things like grasp and your bubbles, but positional play, very important. Awareness of where your team is, and also just general mechanics, right? Of the aiming, tracking, hunting people down, killing them, all super important and very critical, especially on a hero like Zarya. All right, I'm gonna stop there. Hopefully, this is helpful.